Okay guys, welcome back to my channel. In this video, we're going to be talking about what no one is telling you, what no one is talking about in the SMMA industry. Alright, so here are some common myths, and I was actually just talking with a, uh, a kid I'm mentoring actually the other day, and you know, he's telling me all these kind of different myths that he had just kind of learned by watching so many different YouTube videos. And that's really sort of a harm of, I've seen too, way too many teen entrepreneurs out there watching so many of these YouTube videos, telling them that they can easily pick up 1,000 to 1,500 a month retainers like nothing, telling them that client acquisition is just simple, super simple if you just put a strategy and formula behind it, telling them that the clients are going to last forever, and then telling them that they can escape the 9 to 5 lifestyle. And unfortunately, this just brainwashes so many kids. They end up buying these courses, buying these $1,000, $2,000 courses that are not even helping them get anywhere close to where the course mentor and where the... Uh, the course perception thinks that they're going to be. So I wanted to break down a lot of these myths. So the very first one is that you can easily score these thousand or fifteen hundred a month retainers. That is not the case, guys. I live in New York. I live in an area called Westchester. Actually, it's considered a pretty wealthy area in general. So the businesses that I'm pitching are, by definition, going to have the business owners are going to have more money. And I could tell you guys, there is no way that a Many, many business owners in the area are going to start forking over a thousand to fifteen hundred dollars a month retainers to kids. So a thousand to fifteen hundred a month, that's twelve thousand, sixteen thousand dollars a year to a kid who has little to no experience in the SMA industry. It's just not going to happen. So I, I don't know what these YouTubers are telling you, telling you that you could charge a thousand dollars a month right off the bat. I know it may sound very appealing, but who do you think is more successful at the end of the day? The kid who's trying to sell his $1,000 a month retainers and has zero clients, or the kid who sold his $500 a month retainers and has three clients. 10 out of 10 times, I'm going to be want, to, want to be business partners with the kid who's charging $500 a month, the market price, and really building a business. Remember, guys, the market sets the price, not you. So you have to go out there, figure out what people are willing to pay, and then structure your pricing around that. All right, next, client acquisition. So this is the most difficult one. This is really separates... The SMMA hobbyists and the people that just watch YouTube videos to the SMMA business owners. Once you go out and get your first client, going from zero to one is the biggest step in the SMMA industry. Even if it's a 200, 300 a month client, doesn't matter at all. Just getting that first client goes from being a hobbyist to a business owner. Uh, Peter Thiel wrote a book called Zero to One. And like one of his main points was like, just going from nothing to something is so, so huge. Even it's probably the equivalent of going from one client to five clients, just going from zero clients to one client. Like it's such, such a huge leap going from you're not in business to you're in business. So the client acquisition part to the SMA industry is really over-exaggerated how easy it is to go out and pitch clients. It's tough to cold call, tough to door knock. And also a lot of times I see people just don't have the consistency to really follow through and really get clients. I've gotten clients through basically all the ways, door knocking, cold calling, and I can tell you it takes way more calls and way more door knocks than you think it's going to take. So the client acquisition, totally over-exaggerated. Client longevity, people think that once they get this $1,000 a month client, the client's going to last forever. Guess what, guys? That's not true at all. If the client's not satisfied with your service after one or two months, that could just be a one or two month client, and you'll unfortunately you'll never hear from them again. You know, that $1,000 a month income you're depending on to really build your business if it only lasts for two months, that's not an income. And then lastly, escape the escape the nine to five work style. So so many people want to get into this business so that they can escape the nine to five when they don't really realize that this is not a nine to five business. When you go from an employee or a school or anything that's not a business to a business, you're going from something with set times, you clock in, you clock out, to a business. A business is never off. A business is always running. Okay, well, um, I already completed all the work that I need to do for the client for today or for the week. Well, guess what, guys? When you complete your work, you should be prospecting. There's, there's no such thing as too much prospecting for a business. There's not such thing as too much sales, too much going out there and pitching yourself. You can't grow your business too big, right? So your business, once you make the mental decision to start a business, you go from, you know, kind of like a worker's mode, which is you turn on and off your work mode, to a employer's work mode or a business owner's work mode, which is you're just always on. There's no off switch. You just are constantly on. 
You wake up, you think about the business. You go to sleep, you think about the business. And until you've grown your business to a substantial point where you want it to be, you're going to have to live that kind of life. Anyway, so here's some of the myths busted. Typically, 1000 to 1500 a month retainers are not realistic, especially to start off with. You can much more, you're just going to be able to start a business if you charge 300 or 500 a month retainers because people are going to feel a lot more comfortable willing to give a kid a 300 or 500 a month retainer to start them off than they are giving them a thousand plus dollars. So it's going to be a lot easier to start going from zero to one, as I was talking about before. If you don't go from zero to one, you never really become a business owner. So even if you think you're worth 1000 or think you're worth 1500 or you want to get to that point in the future, you have to start somewhere. And as I said, what the market determines, if you're going up to 10 people and they all told you 1500 too much, well, then you better start with 500 and then build your way up from there. Okay, next, long periods of prospecting. So as I said, guys, it always takes so many more cold calls, so many more door knocks than you think it's going to take. Just a rule of 10 I like to go by is... However many you think it's going to take, multiply that number times 10, and maybe you'll get close to the number that's going to take. So if you think in order to get one meeting, it's going to take 20 calls, probably going to take 200 calls. Hey, maybe it won't. Maybe it'll only take 100 calls. But you shouldn't go in thinking that's only going to take uh, 20 calls because you're most likely going to be wrong. Next, short term. So too often because of there's so many different reasons. A lot of times, if the, the SMMA owner doesn't set clear expectations with the client over when they can expect to see an ROI, or they don't set a clear expectation in terms of in terms of the services that are going to be provided, or they pretend like they're going to like you know magically just change from a, a failing business to to like a winning business, or they're going to start bringing in tens of thousand dollars rent, whatever the case may be. If you're not on the same page, that's a recipe for disaster. You're going to lose that client very quickly. If you don't have a contract very often, that can lead to miscommunication, right? So the client thought you're going to be doing this, this, and this, and you thought you're going to be doing this, this, and that. And whenever there's kind of confrontation between you and the client, that often doesn't end well. And then there's always something that you have to account for in business, which is like the random variables. So, you know, the owner gets sick, the business closes, there's some outside market factors that you can't interfere with. Those you can never interfere with, but the other two you can definitely affect. And there's way too many SMMA owners. They're so lucky to get that thousand a month client in the first place, but they don't know how to keep the client. They don't know how to put in place contracts. They don't know how to set expectations. And then that client's gone within a one to two month period. So the longevity of clients is way overestimated in the business. You always think that once they get that thousand a month client retainer, that client's with them for life. If you don't keep meeting their expectations and you don't keep making sure you're communicating with that client, that client's not going to be there for too long. So communication and expectations are both really key components to keeping these clients. So anyway, oftentimes after SMMA owners encounter these obstacles, the ones that I mentioned below, and they don't have some of the experience that I've just been telling you guys, they just kind of give up. They kind of be like, yeah, the SMMA thing, I'm sort of doing it. I was doing it for two, three months, didn't see any results, and I'm just going to give up and go try something else. That is 100% the wrong mentality. When has anyone who's ever given up succeeded in something? I mean, yeah, you can change. Yeah, you can like change your business model. Maybe you focus on this niche instead of this niche. But people that are truly successful never, ever, ever give up. And that's why I have this picture here. So Donald Trump, like him or hate him? I mean, I'm sure half the people watching hate him, half the people watching love him. That doesn't matter. The dude has an insane work ethic. He outworked his competitor, Hillary Clinton. By I think like a ratio of three to one. He was visiting three times as many cities as she was. And just work outworking her on every single level. His Facebook ads talk about SMMA and how powerful it could be. He a big reason considering there's a, a whole study I read about about a big part of how he won was because of the his Facebook ads team, which was like a hundred person Silicon Valley ads team, which was running his Facebook ad campaign. And apparently uh, that was like a big reason behind why he won the US election. But anyway, in the case. His work ethic on his own is insane. I mean, I'm 17 years old. I don't even know if I could run around the country this much. The man is, I think, 60. I think he was 69 years old when he ran. So close to a 70-year-old man who's being in three different locations every single day for, I think, 300 days. I mean, that you have to be just so committed to your goal. You have to be so on point in order to have that kind of work ethic. And there just has to be no thought in your mind of giving up. I mean, and even when Donald Trump, I mean, all the polls were saying he wasn't going to win. Every single poll, like a month from the election, was saying, yep, this is Hillary's got this thing in the bag. And right up until the very end, he was still campaigning, still going. And then, look, he never gave up, and it worked for him. Like, he came through in the end. So this is a lesson to you guys as SMA owners. 
You never, ever want to give up, no matter if you're not getting clients in the first month. If you only made 100 calls, don't expect to get a client, right? You assume it's going to take 100 calls to get one meeting? Well, guess what? One meeting doesn't always mean one client. One meeting means a meeting. You typically need about five meetings to get a client. So assume you're going to make 500 to 1,000 calls. Whatever you need, whatever you assume, how much work you assume is going to take to start an investment business, multiply that number times 10, and then you're going to be sort of within the range of what it's actually going to take to get the goals that you want to achieve. So anyway, I just kind of give you all the misconceptions. Here are all the things that are unique about the SMMA business and why, in my opinion, it's better than any other business. Very low overhead. Oftentimes when you're just starting out, you're your own employee. You don't really have any other expenses. You don't, I mean, you don't even need a website in many cases. You don't need business cards. You don't need office space. You, you don't really have a cost of product. The cost of the product you're selling is your own services, right? Like, you know, when an e-commerce company is selling like this product over here, it costs them money to buy that product, to ship that product, all the labor involved in transporting that product. All that is cost for them. When you're delivering an SMMA service, which is all done virtually, the only cost is like your internet bill. I mean, it's just such a low overhead business. And because of that, it has a very high margin. Typically, SMMA owners have anywhere from a 70 to 80% margin just because of all that low overhead I was saying. In addition, if you can set the expectations right and if you can communicate well with your clients, you're going to have monthly retainers. And those monthly retainers, 12 months a year, they kind of keep coming in. Monthly cash flow and monthly cash flow is really what builds a business. You can work from anywhere. So this is what I was saying before. You don't need office space, right? Like you could fulfill the SMMA services that you're doing from your laptop from virtually anywhere in the world. You could do it from your home. No office rent there. You could do it from a friend's house. You could do it from a hotel room. There's, you could literally do it from anywhere. And because of that, once again, it feeds into the no overhead. And you can also like, I mean, travel the world. That's a whole other video for me to get into about like all these you know, teenagers or young adults who just say, I just want to get financial independence so I can travel the world. I don't really know what the huge craze is behind that, but nevertheless, you can work from anywhere if you want. Like if you have clients in London and America and Australia, you could be traveling all over the world and still be able to fulfill the services for those clients, especially once you build a team. Next is perceived as the next big thing. So this is actually a really, really powerful thing. Business owners know that there's something there about SMMA, social media marketing. They know that it's a crucial component of their business if they want to still be around over the next 10 to 20 years. They know that things like the internet are not going away. They know that everyone is on social media, many times including them. They know that if they don't get their social media right, either hurt their business or not allow them to expand in the way that they want to. So they recognize that there's some element of you that they need. And always in the back, so many of the business owners I talk to, in the back of their head, they know that they got to up their social media game. So because it has this great level of perception, it makes it a relatively easier thing. Not super easy. I mean, everything's hard to sell. But it makes it an easier thing than other industries to sell. Right? So like the window repair guy. Not an exciting thing. Like an accountant. Yeah, people know that they need an accountant. But that's nothing new. That's nothing exciting. It's not going to help grow their business. It's not like the cutting age of the frontier. They probably already have an accountant. Like there's just so many obstacles and there's so many more barriers to entering into the accounting industry. That something like SMMA would, many times they don't have an SMMA person. Uh, you're a lower cost alternative to hiring their own full-time marketing person. And it's really a way that they can, accounting is like a cost for their business. There's no way they're going to be able to grow their business by hiring the best accountant. But by hiring the best SMMA owner, they are going to be able to grow their business. And lastly, being young is a huge advantage to this business. Because of the reasons I was just saying before, when you're younger, you're perceived, and to be honest, you probably are, better at knowing social media. You, you just instinctively know it so much better because you grew up on social media. You understand Facebook. You understand Instagram. You understand Snapchat because you're using all these products on the consumer's end as well. So you know what the other brands are doing. You know what brands you like are doing. And you can understand and model some of these other strategies that like other big brands are having success with and use it for your small town businesses or medium sized businesses, whatever the case may be. But anyway, business owners know that because you guys are young, you guys know social media. And believe it or not, this is one of the few industries where they will actually trust a younger person over an older person, right? So with an accountant, if there's a new young hotshot who comes in and says, hey, I want to be your accountant, and he's 18 years old versus an accountant who's 60. He's, you know, he's old. He has a lot of experience. He's been in the business 20 plus years. 
most of the time the business owner is going to go with the 60 plus year old guy even if he costs more because they just want the guy with more experience these older accounting is in particular something you have to be very meticulous with it's perceived that if you're older you're better however in smma that's not the case at all in fact if you're older it's many times a disadvantage because who's going to know social media better even the business owner knows this like their son or daughter or someone closer to son or daughter's age or the 50 year old male or woman who like goes to pitch them and says hey you know i run a marketing company we do social media marketing now i mean they clearly don't know as nearly as much about social media as someone who's much younger and uses the platform constantly would so the young have a tremendous advantage in this industry now is the time to start taking advantage of this whole social media wave you know there's so many different areas that you can go in there's literally so many different opportunities whether it be running facebook ads instagram management a combination of both content creation you know running snapchat ads running instagram ads running even linkedin managing linkedin profiles i mean there's just so many different areas to social media and social media management and social media marketing that you can get into and i would 100 percent recommend that young people highly consider looking into the industry so all right without further ado get working and get hustling and i'll see you guys in the next video all right peace